the historic Salmon March speech by the father of the nation, Bangabuntu Sheikh Muzibur Rahman, was a de facto declaration of Bangladesh's independence. It has been declared as World Heritage by the UNESCO and has been recognized in the memory of the World International Register. This great speech has not yet been preserved in English audio version. So Education Interior builds up an audio version of this speech in English with a view to disseminating its immense significance to every corner of the world. My brothers, I come before you today with a heart laden with sadness. You are aware of everything and you know everything that has happened. We have tried with our lives. And yet the sadness remains that today in Dhaka, Chattogram, Khulna, Rashahi and Rangpu, the streets are soaked with the blood of my brothers. Today the people of Bengal desire emancipation. The people of Bengal wish to leave. The people of Bengal demand that their rights be acknowledged. What wrong have we committed? In the elections, the people of Bangladesh entrusted me and the Aumilik with the totality of their electoral support. It was our expectation that the parliament would meet. There we would frame our constitution, that we would develop this land, that the people of this country would achieve their economical, political and cultural freedom. But it is a matter of grief that today we are constrained to say in all sadness that the history of the past 23 years has been the history of persecution of the people of Bengal. A history of shedding blood of the people of Bengal. This history of the past 23 years has been one of the agonizing cries of men and women. The history of Bengal has been a history where the people of this land have made the streets and highways of this land crimson with their blood. We have shed our blood in 1952. In 1954, we owned the elections and yet were not allowed to hold power. In 1958, Ayub Khan imposed martial law and kept the nation in a state of slavery for 10 years. On 7 June 1966, when the sons of my land rose in support of the Six Point Movement, they were mown down in gunfire. When Yahya Khan took over, after Ayub Khan fell in the fury of the movement of 1969, he promised that he would give us a constitution, give us democracy, we placed our faith in him. And then history moved a long way. The elections took place. I met President Yahya Khan. I appealed to him, not just as the majority leader of Bengal, but also as the majority leader of Pakistan to convene the National Assembly on 15 February. He did not pay heed to my appeal. He listened to Mr. Bhutto and he said that the assembly would be convened in the first week of March. I agreed with him and said we would sit in the assembly. I said that we would discuss matters in the assembly. I even went to the extent of suggesting that despite our party being the majority, if anyone proposed anything that is legitimate and right, we would accept his proposal. Mr. Bhutto came here. He held negotiations with us. And when he left, he said that the door is not closed, that more discussions would take place. After that, I spoke to other political leaders, 
I told them to join me in deliberations so that we could give shape to a constitution for the country. But he said that if members elected from West Pakistan came here, the assembly would turn into a slaughterhouse. And about here, he warned that anyone who would join the assembly would end up losing his life. He issued dreadful warnings of closing down all the shops from Peshawar to Karachi. If the assembly session goes ahead, I said that the assembly session would go ahead. And then suddenly, on the 1st of March, the assembly session was called off. Mr. Yahya Khan, exercising his powers as president, had called to the National Assembly into session. And I had said that I would go to the assembly. Mr. Bhutto said he would not go. 35 members came here from West Pakistan and suddenly the assembly was called off. The blame was all placed squarely on the people of Bengal. The blame was put at my door. Once the assembly meeting was postponed, the people of this land decided to register the act. I enjoined upon them to observe a peaceful general strike. I instructed them to close down all factories and industrial installments. The people responded positively to my directives. Through sheer spontaneity, they emerged on the streets. They were determined to pursue their struggle through peaceful situation. What have we attained? The weapons we bought with our money to defend the country against foreign aggression are being used against the poor and downtrodden people of my country today. The bullets fires their hearts today. We are the majority in Pakistan. Whenever we Bengalis have attempted to ascend to the heights of power, they have swooped upon us. I have spoken to him over telephone. I told him, Mr. Yahya Khan, you are the president of Pakistan. Come, be a witness to the inhumanity in which the people of my Bengal are being murdered. To the way in which the mothers of my land are losing their sons. I told him, come, see and dispense justice. But he suggested that I had agreed to participate in a round table conference to be held on 10th March. I have already said a long time ago, what RTC, with whom do I sit down to talk? Can I fraternize with those who have taken the blood of my people? All of a sudden, without discussing anything with me and after a secret meeting lasting five hours, he has delivered a speech in which he has placed all the blame for the impasse on me, on the people of Bengal. My brothers, they have called the assembly on the 25th. The marks of blood have not yet dried up. I said on the 10th that Muzibur Rahman would not walk across the blood to take part in a round table conference. You have called the assembly, but my demands must be met first. Martial law must be withdrawn. All military personnel must be lulled back to the barracks. An inquiry must be conducted into the manner in which the killings have been caused. And power must be transferred to the elected representatives of the people. And only then shall we consider the question of whether or not to sit in the National Assembly. Prior to the fulfillment of our demands, we cannot take part in the assembly. I do not wish to become the Prime Minister. We wish to see the rights of the people of this country established. Let them make it clear, without ambiguity, that beginning from today in Bangladesh, all courts, magistracies, government offices and educational institutions will remain closed for an indefinite period.
in order that the poor do not suffer. In order that my people do not go through pain, all the activities will continue. They will not come within the ambit of the general strike from tomorrow. Rickshaws, horse carriages, trains and river vessels will ply. Not even the Secretariat, Supreme Court, High Court, Judges Court, Semi-Government Offices, Wabda, nothing will work. Employees will collect their salaries on the 28th. But if the salaries are not paid, if another bullet is fired, if any more people are murdered, it is my directive to all of you, turn every house into a fortress. Resist the enemy with everything you have. And even if I am not around to guide you, I direct you, close off all roads and pathways forever. We will starve them into submission. We will submerge them in water. You are our brothers. Return to your barracks and no harm will come to you. But do not try to shoot bullets into my heart again. You cannot keep 70 million people in bondage. Now that we have learned to die, no power on earth can keep us in subjugation. For those who have embraced martyrdom and for those who have sustained injuries, we in the army league will do all we can to relieve their pain. Those among you who can, please lend a helping hand through contributing to our relief committee. The owners of industries will make sure that the wages of workers who have taken part in this strike for the past seven days are duly paid. I shall tell employees of the government, my work must be hard. And my instructions followed. Until freedom comes to my land, all taxes will be held back from payment. No one will pay them. Bear in mind that the enemy has infiltrated our ranks to cause confusion and so discord among us. In our Bengal, everyone, be he a Hindu or a Muslim, Bengali or non-Bengalis, is our brother. It is our responsibility to ensure the security. Our good name must not be tainted. And remember, employers of radio and television, if the radio doesn't get our message across, no Bengali will go to the radio station. If the television doesn't broadcast our news, no Bengali will go to the television station. Banks will remain open for two hours to enable people to engage in transactions. But there will be no transfer of even a single penny from East Bengal to West Pakistan. Telephone and telegram services will continue in East Bengal and news can be dispatched overseas. But if moves are made to exterminate the people of this country, Bengalis must act with caution. In every village, in every neighborhood, set up Shangram Purishat under the leadership of the Amalek and be prepared with whatever you have. Remember, having mustered the lesson of sacrifice, we shall give more blood. Inshallah, by the will of the Almighty God, we shall not rest until we have freed the people of this land. The struggle this time is for our emancipation. The struggle this time is for independence. Joy Bangla.